around the Pacific Southwest is rapidly evaporating, including the second largest reservoir in the United States, Lake Powell. The creation of Lake Powell dates back to 1956, when President Eisenhower started the building of the Glen Canyon Dam by pressing a button in the White House, initiating the first blasts of construction. The reservoir started filling with water in 1963 and took about 17 years to fill, reaching max capacity of 25.1 million acre-feet of water in 1980. The goal of this dam was to store water create recreation, as well as generate power for many states, including Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Nebraska, and Wyoming. With water levels dropping, energy creation is a concern. As the lake levels drop, if when it, once it gets to a Deadpool state, it can no longer pass through the turbines and produce energy. And so there's a real concern about what the energy producer is going to do to replace that lost potential energy that comes from producing hydropower at the dam. According to the Bureau of Reclamation, plans are in place if operation levels become too low. Reservoirs nearby will release water into Powell to keep the levels at operation standard. The creation of this reservoir created many problems including social, economic, and ecological consequences. Dr. Danielle Perry says that when looking at the way concrete dams are built, it isn't actually the most green approach to greenhouse gas emissions. It might look like it's a more sustainable form of energy, but up until recently, people weren't taking a deeper look. Now we know that actually pouring all the tons of concrete that it takes to build a dam actually generates a whole lot of CO2 emissions because the chemical reaction of making concrete releases CO2 into the atmosphere. And so until that concrete is dry, it's releasing CO2. Not only is the concrete it takes to build a dam toxic, but the plant and animal life that die around the area when it's flooded decomposes and turns into methane, being another contributing factor to greenhouse gas emissions. From the building of the dam to the maintenance of that reservoir, you're actually contributing a lot of greenhouse gases. So in that way, no, it's not better than diesel or coal or natural gas. Um, and on top of it, you get all of the issues of fragmented ecosystem. Warmer global temperatures lead to more humidity in the atmosphere that does not precipitate. The evaporation of the reservoir with warmer temperatures is one of the key reasons that the lake's water level is so low. But is this a matter of climate change that is driving these changes? Last time that concentrations of carbon dioxide were this high was over three million years ago. We are changing the climate through our greenhouse gas emissions and it has resulted in global increases in temperature. And when you have increased temperature, what happens is that the air can hold more moisture. So if the temperatures are increasing, it's also increasing evaporation rates, but more of that water can stay up in the atmosphere and doesn't precipitate, doesn't come down in the form of rain or snow. And so um, this is why the lakes, the lakes, the reservoirs are so low. 97% of climate scientists agree that humans are causing the changes that we're seeing now. Marshall says this is because of the extensive jump in admissions within the past 150 years. And these changes are one of the leading causes for the lake's decline in water. Climate changes naturally, like there have been warm periods in the past and cool periods in the past, and that's a natural phenomena driven by changes in Earth's orbit, um, solar radiation, changes in tectonic um, movement, I guess. Um, 
but those changes happen on really long time scales and the changes we're seeing now are just so rapid in comparison. Because of climate change and rising temperatures, we're seeing long-term change in precipitation across the western U.S., um, which is really showing up in less precipitation. Um, and when it does arrive, it's coming in the form of rain instead of snow. So the snowpack in the mountains is being reduced through that aridification. Uh, and that is affecting how much water is making its way into the Colorado River reservoirs, including Lake Powell. This year in particular is a very wet year with over 250% precipitation in many areas. In regards to Lake Powell, Dr. Danielle Perry says that this winter was one of a kind, and decisions about the lake should not be based off of a wet year. When they wrote the Colorado River Compact, they used climate data that was actually uh, hydrologic data that was gathered during an unusually high period of precipitation and so they made the decisions about how much water would be allocated to each state based on data that really didn't align with the norm in the basin. So the river has always been over allocated because that wasn't the norm. And we can think of this winter kind of in that way. This is not the norm. So we should not be using this winter to make any decisions about the future in this basin. Dry areas are likely to become drier and wet areas to become wetter. So in the southwest, we're predicted to become drier with climate change. That does have major implications for the water resources we have. According to the Lake Powell Water Database, Lake Powell is currently sitting at 3,525 elevation, being only at 23% capacity or full pool. For it to fill all the way back up would take many, many years. There have been many protests to drain Lake Powell and fill Lake Mead first due to the sandstone's tendency to let water escape. But quite a few issues arise with the idea. Toxic sediments such as fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides, engine oil, uranium, and arsenic that sit on the bottom of the lake would dry and become airborne. As the Lake Powell dries up, um, all of the sediment that has accumulated in that lake over time will become airborne. And it could be that it holds toxins. Uh, so the surrounding communities and the downwinders, as we call them, could be affected by uh, toxic particles in the air. According to the National Institutes of Health, many studies on lakes that have dried up in the past have been known to cause cancer, respiratory failure, reproductive problems, and more. Even before the dam was built, protests took place to preserve the canyon's history. Ancient relics from early Navajo and Grand Canyon tribes were lost when the dam flooded the canyon, but with dropping water levels, these cultural sites are coming to light once again. Indigenous groups have been using the canyon for quite some time and have dated back to 11,500 years ago. It covered the footsteps of all the Grand Canyon tribes, the indigenous peoples who still live here around the canyon. It's incredibly detrimental to indigenous society, to culture, because you're erasing their history. Water levels dropping have also been hurting businesses and recreation around the area. Many marinas are not allowing motorized vessels to be launched at this time, including Wawweep, Dangling Rope, Bullfrog, and Antelope Point. Lower Antelope tour guide Tony Huffman says the water levels have been taking a toll on the business. It's made work harder, um, you know, getting to, um, you know, our tour spots, uh, just getting the boats into the water from the kayaks, just. Every, every which direction, it just makes everything harder. Huffman says business has been slow, with launch ramps being hand launch only. And once the kayaks get some water in them, his job carrying them down to the water becomes much more difficult. Yeah, it's a lot harder. We're packing them, you know, 
anywhere from 150 feet to 250 feet, just depending on which uh, boat ramp you're at, which launch ramp you're at. And so it makes it, it, makes it difficult, especially when you have, uh, you know, 40, 40 people tours. The Glen Canyon National Recreation Area has spent roughly a million dollars to deepen Castle Rock Cut, which was put in as a boater time-saving route. The water levels are now too low, and all the progress of keeping the stretch open is gone. Additionally, the National Monument Rainbow Bridge has no more dock access due to the shallow dangers to boats. The social, economic, and ecological consequences around Lake Powell continue to be an issue. Um, it causes a lot of ecological and social damage. While economies at the large scale are growing through the provision of that energy, local riverine communities, the, the, the small communities who've lived near rivers for a long time, are oftentimes displaced by the creation of a dam and the filling of a reservoir. Climate change being the most detrimental and causational problem for water in the Southwest. Some ways to help preserve the reservoir are by taking shorter showers, not using as much electricity, minimizing gardening water use, and considering climate change action.